Hebrew. Good morning once again, valid guest. I figure you're not quite ready for your morning tea just yet. Perhaps a little exercise will get you going for the day. We have a very, very special guest instructor. He is a yoga teacher who's come to the inn to give very special classes in yoga. You see, he's developed some brand new moves that he's going to teach our guest. <laughs> oh, yes. I can't wait to show you these moves. Let me introduce you to him. Well, it looks like he's busy practicing again. I'll tell you what. I'll just talk to you about the moves, and then I'll introduce you later. <laughs> Here. Here's his first move. He calls it Downward Facing Dead. <laughs> and once you've mastered that move, it leads right into another move that he calls Downward Facing Dead Without a Head. <laughs> and it seems like the inn's dogs are eager to devour the new lessons. <laughs> Speaking of devouring... Why don't we just wait until he's done? In the meantime, I'll tell you the next tale that I like to call The Devourer Below. Today we will be concluding our mini campaign of the Return to the Night of the Zealot with the episode The Devourer Below. We're running Ash Campete True Solo on standard difficulty and uh, we've earned just a bit of experience since our last scenario in fact we got four experience points last scenario and um, we've tried to make the most use of it Pete has not had the greatest luck he was defeated in the first scenario in the gathering at the very end in a make or break moment by pulling a auto fail token on his final strike against the ghoul priest and in the Midnight Masks, he was only able to interview two cultists. Um, unfortunately, he had to resign and end his, his investigation at that moment. For those of you who are not familiar with using Pete, uh, you do get to start with Duke in play, and so we will be doing that, which will give us a little bit of an advantage early on. The Arkham Woods. From interrogating members of the conspiracy within Arkham, Pete has learned that they're performing a rite of vengeance in response to the destruction of one of their master's lairs. Pete has entered the woods outside of Arkham to try and stop them. The woods seem unnaturally cold and filled with a deadly silence. Investigating the trail, the evidence Pete has gathered has led him to the woods south of Arkham, where he believes a ritual to summon a being called Umar Doth is about to take place. Stealing his resolve, Pete sets forth deeper into the woods, hoping to find the site of the ritual. So last scenario, we exiled a copy of A Test of Will, uh, so we had to get rid of it. Uh, we also getting rid of these two cards in order to upgrade because we got four experience points. Um, we decided to get two copies of Stroke of Luck and because we exiled the Test of Will, we get to replace that with a level zero card, which would be the um, Overpower. Uh, we'll shuffle those into our deck and get going. So, last scenario, we only interviewed two cultists. And um, in this scenario, uh, we are given some options uh, near the end in order to complete or succeed. Um, we could sacrifice our friend, our newfound friend, Lita Chandler, the Zealot, to the great old one, Umardoth. Or we can just try and fight him, or we can die. So, um, I think our strategy going in is we're going to try and play this the way it was meant to be. In other words, try to find as many clues as possible and advance the act deck. These are the uh, cultists that did survive, so they will be coming out later if we advance the act deck. These are the two cultists that we defeated before. We'll put those aside. And uh, we'll shuffle the encounter deck now. Anyways, the um, the way the scenario goes, uh, normally without the return to version, you can kind of cheat it. You can just sit there and, and set up your board until Umar Doth comes out. Because no matter what you do, whether you advance the act or agenda, 
he's going to end up coming out unless you're really, really fast at advancing the act deck and then you can prevent him from coming out. But that's, um, that's more difficult. Uh, usually that's easier to do with multiplayer or someone who's good at gathering clues initially and able to kill a bunch of things at once. So uh, that's out of the question for us. Um, we think uh, at, at this point that he will be coming out no matter what. So, um, oh, um, we have to pick from these uh, Arkham Woods locations. There's 10 now because of the return to set. They're randomly selected. We'll just place them on the side here. Anyways, um, so our goal, we're going to play this and try to advance the act deck as much as possible because the more act decks we advance, the easier Umerdoth becomes at the end. Uh, with the return to set, if you don't advance the act, you are punished for it. So, uh, let's see. Okay, getting rid of a bunch of these cards. Uh, I'm kind of hoping for a weapon early on. So I can handle myself in addition to having Duke. Duke helps, but still, it's nice to have that backup weapon. And the opening hand is not terribly bad. Getting two allies, including Lita Chandler, in the beginning is definitely something that, uh, you know, I can't complain about. And now that we've shuffled this up, we have added two Doom to the current agenda because of how poorly we fared last scenario. We also have a starting damage because of the trauma we suffered in the first scenario by the Ghoul Priest. Speaking of the Ghoul Priest, we did add him to the encounter deck. He is somewhere in there, and he can pop out any time to make our life miserable. Hangman's Brook separates a town from the woods south of Hockham. Passing over the small bridge, Pete follows the main path deeper into the forest. So we start the main path, which is connected to each woods location. We do have the at, the ability to resign at any point, which we will not be taking advantage of. And uh, two shrouds, zero clues. That is our starting location. And here we go. Let's do this. Uh, I, I think this deck is decent. This is a difficult scenario, so I don't expect to be able to kill Umerdoth. To be honest, I'm, I'm going to try and fight him till I die. And... Uh, <laughs> Unless a better opportunity presents itself. Um, but my initial plan is to fight him. See how much damage Pete can deal to him before he goes down. So we'll see how well we do. In our first action, we're going to play Dark Horse. Very happy to have this in my opening hand. Uh, I can choose to not get resources during the upkeep phase. And I'll get a plus one to all stats when I have zero resources in play. As my second action, I'll be putting down Forbidden Knowledge. Pete has discovered some stuff, and um, it will deal hard to him, but he will gain resources uh, because of it. I'll put some uh, hard tokens on here um, to kind of remind me that I need to take hard when I gain a resource from this. So we'll, we'll take them simultaneously. There we go. We'll take a horror and a resource right now. And that leaves three on the thing. Again, uh, if you're not familiar with this peak deck, if you didn't see the previous episodes, um, horror, I want to have horror on me in order to make this deck successful. And now I'm putting another ally down, Yaoto, who will help me leverage a lot of the skill cards. This, this deck is very skill heavy with multiple skill icons on each card. Um, so Yaoto will be very handy in leveraging those and be, being able to gain extra advantage from those skill cards once they get discarded into the discard pile. And pull another Dark Horse. That's not good. I think we're going to skip out on getting a resource this round because a Dark Horse, it allows us to do that. We don't really need it. We'll add a Doom to the agenda and then we'll draw our first encounter card. So... We, let's see, we pull a, ooh, Chill from Below, one of the new cards. Test three willpower for each point you fail by. You have to discard a card at random from your hand. If you can't, you take one damage for each card you cannot discard. That's not good. I um, need cards in my hand for this deck to work properly. I have to pass this test. Commit Dark Horse for one skill icon. It's going to be a five versus three. And let's see what the Chaos Bag has to say about it. And it pulls a very, very... Ooh, a cultist token. 
which equals a minus two, and we have to place a Doom on the nearest cultist. There are no cultists nearby, so that fizzles. And uh, we succeed and get rid of this. Thank goodness. Okay, first round is done. Let's go ahead and investigate over here. Let's see. Arkham Woods, growing up, you always want to stay out of the woods at night. Now you know why. This would be a nice picnic spot if it weren't for the monsters. One shroud and no clues, and I can use an action to heal one damage or one horror. Um, normally these are trap um, abilities on these locations. They're just there to waste your turns and your actions and stuff. But I think I'm going to use it. I mean, might as well. Heal damage. I have that trauma from before. Why not just get rid of it? I'm not in a rush right now. Okay, so nothing else to do here. Let's draw a card. Okay, cool. Fight or flight. Very good card. Ends our turn. We'll go ahead and ready everybody and draw a card. Oh, unexpected courage. Okay. Very good. Well, the agenda is going to advance this round. We're not going to get a resource, and uh, we'll just go ahead and add that doom, which moves, propels the agenda forward. And the story gets to move along very, very quickly because we started with the doom on the agenda. Death to the intruders! Throughout the woods, a shrieking cry echoes from somewhere deep in the forest a score of hideous voices answer the call inhuman as the bang of hounds and yet articulate repeating a singular name the chanting builds in intensity echoing into the cold air of the night the sparse clouds in the sky coalesce above the alchem woods blotting out the faint light of the stars each enemy gets plus one fight and plus one evade while this agenda is in play. That is not good. Okay. Well, there are no enemies in play right now, so hopefully it stays that way. We get to reshuffle this, and uh, we unfortunately have to discard cards until we draw a monster enemy. And uh, let's start discarding. Okay, no, no, no. Oh, wait. This, I think, looks like a monster. Humanoid cultist. Uh, put him there. I think it said monster, right? Not creature? Yeah, monster. All right, we'll keep doing. Oh. Uh, this one has a monster. So, Grave Eater 222, two, two, so it becomes 323. Two, and when it attacks, you discard a card at random from your hand. That kind of sucks. So, it arrives in the main path with a doom on it and now we'll have to do the mythos phase so we get to draw another card oh and it's another creature it's a humanoid cultist 311 disciple of the devourer and place a doom on it or one of your clues on its location if it's not agenda one do both we don't have any clues so it just um, gets a doom on it and it just stays there with the doom on it, so I'm not too worried about him. And he's easy to kill anyways, if I needed to do that. But I do want to kill this ghoul, because I need to get through this main path to get to other locations. So, let's formulate a plan here. I think, I think we're just going to move in and, and bite him with Duke. Yeah, because it's going to be a pretty... It's not an easy thing, but it's going to be a four versus a three. But if I do this unexpected courage, it gives me two extra. So that's going to make it a six versus three, uh, three. And we pull a skull. Okay. It's minus X, which is the number of, my, of monster enemies in play, which is one. So we make it. He dies. Duke just chews up this uh, ghoul. Now we're going to go ahead and try and move over to another location. Um, now, nah, let's... Should I draw a card? Let's move in. So, um, we go into the old house. A house waits at the edge of the trail, covered in vines. Inside the walls and floors are bloodstained and littered with dirt, mud, and discarded bones. 
two shroud one clue and we have to investigate it with willpower which is a, a four so that i'm not too worried about that okay and turn and we pull hypochondria <laughs> Uh, well, I guess it's better we get it early rather than in the middle of a boss fight or something. So, um, we don't have any enemies on us. Uh, hopefully, we don't get any during this mythos phase. And we can get rid of this uh, at the moment. Again, I'm not in a rush, so the first priority will be to get rid of that. Let's see, we pull... Oh, and we do pull an enemy. It's a young deep one. Hunter, 333... Three, three. And when it engages, it deals a horror. So it goes right into our threat area. Not what I was looking to, to be doing this round, but it looks like it, we're going to spend the round fighting this thing. Um, hmm. How are we going to handle this guy? If he hits us, we're taking extra horror. Let's attack him with Duke. So Duke's going to bite him. No. Let's use Yalto to discard a card. Ah, damn it. Nothing good. Uh, so Duke's gonna bite this guy. Five versus four. Not the most comfortable uh, test, but we're gonna have to do what we're gonna have to do and see if it works. Oh, um, hold on. Forgot to give myself the horror for it engaging me, so we'll take a horror there. Not too worried again. I, I like getting horror in this deck, so. <laughs> And we pull a minus one. Nice. So Duke bites this thing and deals uh, two damage to it. It's still up. But now the dilemma. I don't have a weapon. It has one more health. But it has... It's tough to hit. I think... I think evading it might be the best option. So we're going to go ahead and uh, evade it. Three versus... Uh, no, four versus three. Cast bag says that we get a skull, another skull. So number of monsters in play, that's one monster in play. So that's a minus one. We get it. He evades or he gets evaded and uh, buys us around. Let's get this clue out of here. So five versus two. And uh, let's see. We pull a minus one. Perfect. We get the clue. Hey, we're moving things along. So far, so good. And this thing uh, needs to get rid of by next round. I would hope so. Hopefully we don't get another enemy or, or we're kind of screwed here. Draw a card for the round. Okay, Lucky Rabbit's Foot. You know, that hasn't come in as handy in this deck as I expected it to. But another discussion for another day. And encounter card, Grasping Hands. Test 3. Agility. For each point you fail by, take one damage. I cannot afford to take that much damage, especially with Hypochondria in play. Uh, we're going to have to commit some cards to this. We'll commit Lucky Rabbit's Foot, bringing our agility to a 5 versus a 3. Let's see how well we do. Zero! Nice! Okay, cool. So we got rid of the Grasping Hands. Thank goodness. That would have been devastating. All right. So we continue our investigation here. We need to kill this guy this round. Duke is going to try and bite at him again. Five versus four. <laughs> so um, Yoto does his move first. Keep forgetting to do this. Um, nothing good. Nothing good. Uh, nothing to commit either. That's fine. Five versus four. And Chaos Bag pulls. Oh, nice. Look at that. Elder Sign. Duke readies. We kill this guy. Duke chews him up to smithereens. And we get to ready Duke again. Uh, we're going to use our remaining two actions to get rid of Hydro Hypochondria. Uh, cannot have that on the board. That, that could just end our, our game. Okay. Ready. Pete and draw a card for the round. Okay, not bad. A three skill icon card. And draw an encounter card. Oh, okay. Dreams are really A. 
goes into play in our threat area, get minus one willpower, minus one um, sanity. Have to use an action to attempt a test to get rid of it. These are always very swingy. Let's try to get rid of this right now. Uh, five versus a three. These can be really swinging. Four versus three. Sorry, I keep forgetting that I have a minus one of sanity because of it. Zero. Okay, cool. We get rid of it. Bye bye. Okay. So far, it's going, uh, you know, fairly decent. Our clue gathering is rather slow, but hey, we're crunching through it. The remains of half eaten animal corpses litter the section of the woods. Befouling the air with a stench. Three shot, one clue. And, uh, doesn't seem too bad. If we get enemies here, though, it could be bad because no enemy can take more than one point of damage if, whenever they're in this location. We do not want to fight Umardoth here. And we draw our card. Okay, say your prayers. That's a good one. So far, a decent hand. I think we're... We're preparing fairly well for this fight. And this advances the agenda. So let's see what it has to say. Um, okay, here we go. The will of Umadoth. A dark presence approaches and you are assaulted by invisible pressures that bring you to your knees. A terrible force threatens to invade your mind and soul. Your throat clenches and your eyes water as the sensation burns through you. The world begins to shift and change as the ritual nears its conclusion. The air grows chilly and the entire forest is covered in a layer of rime. The trees bend unnaturally and their shadows lengthen into weird shapes. All right, so a couple things that we have to do here to set up for this agenda. We need to grab the ritual site and set it into play. And we need to test six willpower. So five versus oh, six. Um, I don't want another weakness, so let's, let's do our best to try and beat this. We're going to commit say your prayers. Our uh, sanity is three or lower, so... We can commit it. Puts us at 9 versus of 6. Let's see what the Chaos Bag has to say about it. And it pulls... Oh, oh God. Other thing. Well, a minus 5, including the committed uh, Sayer Prayers. It's still a failure. Holy cow. That's crazy. So we fail the test. And looks like we have to pull another weakness card. And put it into our hand. A madness weakness. The arrival of Umar Doth has uh, started to affect our mental state. So, at this point, I think Umar Doth will be coming out in just a few rounds. Um, we still have a chance to advance the act. We just gotta get one more clue. And that's one less health and combat uh, value that he will have when he comes out. So, you know, it definitely benefits us to still move this thing forward. Um, as of right now, the board state seems pretty good. I have uh, two allies in play, Duke and Yaoto. And then I have Dark Horse. I have possibility for resources. And I have a decent hand. So, I'm sitting in a decent place. I only have two horror on me. And no damage. I think that... I think that I'm sitting in a good place. If Umardoth were to come out right now, I could stand a chance. And I drew Drawing the Sign, um, which is a very crappy card to get for this deck. But because it's a madness uh, weakness, I can use two actions to get rid of it. And I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, I cannot afford to have this, to have only three cards in my hand. Put the Ritual Set in play. But since we're not there, uh, we don't get to reveal it. And... It is what it is. So, Umar Doth. Wait. No, no. That's when this advances. Sorry. My bad. That, <laughs> That's when this agenda advances. We put the ritual set into play if it's not out already. And Umar Doth. So, right now. Right now, it's just us. 
and we get another chill from below. Test three willpower. For each point we fail by, we have to discard at ra a card at random or take damage. We'll use Yalto to give us a boost of four. Uh, so it's going to be a uh, nine, right? Nine versus three. I think we're going to beat this test pretty fa fairly easily. So that is a tablet. Minus three, we take a damage if there's a monster, which there isn't. So just minus three. That's good enough. We succeed. No chill from below. Thanks to our good friend, Yelto. And um, do I want to get rid of drawing the sign or get this clue? I think let's get go ahead and get the clue first. So we'll use Duke to help us nab this clue. And that's going to be a uh, five versus three. Okay, uh, Chaos Bag, I think 5 versus 3 is decent. Let's go ahead and see what happens. And a 0. Cool. Look at that. We get, we get the clue, and now we'll use our two actions to get rid of this garbage here. Boom. It worked out. <laughs> I know I took a big risk. Uh, still, if I would have failed, I still would have gotten rid of that, drawing the sign first. All right. Oh, nice. One of the cards we upgraded to. I love it when you upgrade to a card and you get it that scenario. It's, you know, there's something about that that just feels so good. It's like, and then if it comes in handy, which hopefully this will, it's like, you know, you did a good thing. So we'll now end our turn. We're ready. Pete, put the Doom on the agenda. And, um,. Draw our encounter card. Oh, Corpse Taker. Spawns at the furthest empty location, 433. And at the end of the Mythos phase, it gets a Doom. At the end of the enemy phase, it moves one step closer to the main path. And then if it's at the main path, then the Doom on it becomes um, permanent Doom. On It gets attached to the agenda. Okay. I don't like these guys. And they're tough. <laughs> Alright, we'll move in, and then we'll move to the final unrevealed location to try and get that final clue. Let's go ahead and reveal it. This clearing has been the site of dark rites since colonists first came to the area over two centuries ago. And it looks like we have to make another willpower test uh, against a four, or we take a damage and a horror. We'll use Alto to give us another willpower boost right here because of this card. That's going to put us at a nine versus a um, four. Should be doable, but see what I mean about this scenario? Like, if, if I would have just stayed in the main path... Oh, nice, we passed. Um, we move from there to here. That's one move. We'll attack him. That's two moves. Okay. Duke's going to attack this guy 5 versus 3. Chaos Bag has been fairly nice to us today. Oh, nice. Look at that. So far, it's been really nice to us. I can't complain about the Chaos Bag. So we have one clue here. That ends our turn. We just need to nab that clue and we'll advance the act and go from there. Okay, this guy at the end of the enemy phase moves here. And then... Um, I ready Peter, ready Duke and Yoto. Oh, Cherski's sake. Okay. And we add a Doom to the agenda. I think this guy with the Doom. Um, no, it's just moved there. Yeah, it's fine. It'll gain, uh, okay. Uh, Grave Eater. Two, two, two. Uh, after it attacks me, I discard a card at random from my hand. And he comes in engaged. Well, that's too bad. I wanted to get this clue this round, but we're going to have to spend some time fighting him. Luckily, it's not very difficult. So, Duke being in play, dealing that extra damage helps so much. Um... Yeah, he gets, this guy gets a Doom now. 
the agenda will be advancing very soon. All right. Let's, uh, what can we commit that'll help us here? I think we're just going to attack him just like that. So it's going to be five versus two. And we get a zero. Another zero. Cool. We killed this guy. <clears throat> I. This guy's going to advance the agenda. At this point, I don't care. Um, let's try to get this clue. If. Um, Umar Doth is coming. Let's play the chair's keepsake. Keepsake. To help us um, absorb some horror, we'll draw a card. Pierce Silvestri. Okay. Yeah, I think nabbing the clue is not going to help us as much as getting some more cards. Um, so I think that's what's going through my head right now. I'm, I'm just not... Because Umar Doth is going to is going to move in or he's going to come out and we need to have cards in order to defeat him this deck needs to have cards um okay draw a card for the round another Yalto okay handy and here we go this agenda I think is going to move now Umar Doth comes out. We're, I have Fight or Flight saved up. Yalto can help me get some attack bonuses after I commit an attack card. I mean, I think we'll do well. If we can kill him, even better. So, the plan is just get as many cards in my hands before Umar Doth actually comes and engages, and then go from there. So, this advances, which means the uh, Umar Doth comes out, the ritual site comes out. If an investigator is in Act 1, it's put the ritual site aside, and Umar Doth, and the Devourer Below comes out. Replace the current Act and Agenda with the Devourer Below. If Umar Doth is defeated, we get to uh, get R2, D2. So, here he comes. Ritual Sight in play. Umar Doth. The large central chamber of a cold dark cavern adorned with arcane markings and dimly lit by candlelight. So Umar Doth deals 3 damage, 3 horror, plus 4 health per investigator, so he has 10. Hunter, massive. 566 six. we can sacrifice Lita Chandler who we do have in our hands um, so it's only after her you throw her to him and he devours her so that's only if we you know are desperate are we gonna sacrifice Lita I have no plans to sacrifice her even though she's in my hand currently I want to go down fighting with Pete because I think that's what he would do he wants to defend the innocent so Umar Doth is out now, and he is coming down the woods. We have quite a few cards in our hands. I think um, if we draw a few more, it wouldn't hurt us. Oh. Disciple of the Devourer. Okay. He does not engage with us, so that's good. That buys us some time. You can get a Doom on you. I don't care. Perfect. So, it gives us another whole round to prepare. Because we have nothing else to do. At this point, since Umar Doth is out already, getting this final clue is not really going to help in any way, shape, or form. Because he has replaced the Act and Agenda card, so... It is what it is. Okay. I do want to keep drawing cards, though, because there are, there are some cards that are better, that work better with the Alto... Like, the ones with the question marks or, like, wild icons don't work as well. So, I do not want to pull or be playing too many of those with him in play. Oh, yes! I got my fire axe. Just what I needed. Uh, let's get a resource. And we will 
play Fire Axe. We can spend resources to attack with it, which will give us a plus two to attack. It does plus one damage when we have no resources in, in play. So, very handy. I think that's uh, something we were lacking right now. And we did get Overpower, which will definitely help us uh, leverage Yalto's ability a little bit better. Umardoth moves, and we ready. We'll draw a card, and we get Inspiring Presence. Another good card that will help us ready Duke and getting an extra use of Duke uh, should we need it. And do we have too many cards? Um, yeah, let's get rid of... I'd hate to get rid of a card because we can always ready Duke by discarding, but... What am I supposed to do? Okay, put a... Uh, <laughs> Doom that's pointless... And draw our next encounter card. And... Mask of Umardoth. Attach the furthest cultist enemy. Gets plus two health. Yeah. And Doom. Yeah, there you go, buddy. Um, the reason I got rid of Peter Silvestri... He's too expensive. He costs three resources. I don't have three resources to play him, so... I was only going to commit him, and I'm not going to be using any kind of evade skills right now. So that was my rationale be behind getting rid of him of over any other card. So uh, Umardoth moves in, I think. I can't remember if I already did the enemy phase before this, if I had already moved him. I um, think so. Right? I think, yeah, I think he moved last round, and I forgot to move him this round. Um, shoot, I, I got distracted, and I don't remember if I had moved him. But we'll just say he moved in. He deals damage to us. Um, one damage, or three damage, three horror. Yeah, we'll get rid of the keepsake. And do one hard to Duke. Okay, perfect. That was a brutal attack. He comes in rampaging <laughs> at us. And uh, now we know what we are facing here. Okay, it's our turn. Let's beat this guy to pulp. Um, where's that card? There we go. Couldn't find it for a second there. Yeah, this gets attached to Umardoth because of the Return of the Knight of the Zealot. Uh, Vault of Earthly Demise. Basically gets plus X health and plus X combat. And uh, X is the number of acts that are still in play. Which, since we didn't advance a single one, there's three acts in play. That means this thing gets three resources. Umardoth has a plus three to fight. And plus three health. That means it's got 13 health and a fight score of eight. <laughs> oh my god. I don't know if we're actually going to even be able to hit this thing. Um, put three resources. Sorry, I forgot to do this earlier when he came out. Because it was sitting on the side and I, I should have had it flipped over on top of him. He just took a hit from this thing and realized just how strong this was because Duke and Yalto both felt the pain as well. <laughs> um, but Duke Duke doesn't let up. Duke is going to try and bite this thing. So uh, let's see what we're going to commit um, the first attack. Let's do... Hmm... Okay, here we go. Duke bites at it. He does rise to the occasion, which gives us three wild icons we'll use for power or combat icons. We're also going to commit overpower, giving us a total of plus five to our attack value. Uh, that gives us a total of a ten versus an eight. Eight. Only two over. All that, and it only puts us two over. That's so crazy. Um, yeah, 
So let's see how well we do. We'll put the overpower as a second one. That way it'll be on top of our discard pile afterwards. Minus one. Hey, Duke bites this creature. Dealing two damage to it. Nice. This goes in our discard pile with overpower on top. Meaning that Yalto, we can use Yalto to give us that plus two. Uh, basically reusing overpower. Very cool. So far, we got a hit in. <laughs> with a fight value of eight, I think getting one hit in is a pretty, pretty good accomplishment. Okay. We do have a lot of good cards that can help us hit him some more. I'm going to save... Um, Fight or flight till next round. That way I can get a full three attacks with the bonus. And inspiring presence might be handy to ready Duke. Um, otherwise, I could just use Yauto and fire axe this guy. And then maybe get... Um, use a resource to boost fire axe. Get a resource from forbidden knowledge. Which, you know, put it on Duke, he'll, he'd still be alive. Put it on myself. Uh, yeah. Um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to play Lita Chandler. She'll give us a plus one to combat and plus one to damage against monster enemies. She gets rid of Yauto when she comes out. But when as soon as I put her out, uh, before she comes out, I think this is the t right timing here. Umardoth will attack me before she comes into play. Meaning that I can actually deal the damage to Yaoto, two of it at least, one damage, one horror, deal myself a horror, deal Duke a damage. Um, it was a brutal hit, but we had to take it in order to get Lita into play. I think this is the right move because she's going to let us deal more damage to him. So do damage there and... It, it doesn't. I can't put any of the damage on Lita because she wasn't out when he did the attack of opportunity. So that's is what it is. And um, so next round, the plan is to use um, fight or flight to give us a plus four to our combat and evade till the end of the round, which will definitely leverage the high combat value that this thing has. So. We're going to axe him in the face. Um, we're going to use, um, let's see, lead and dark host puts us at a four versus an uh, eight. <laughs> and, you know, let's see if we can commit something here. Because even no matter what we get, that's not good enough. But I think, yeah, I have a card that's going to help us with this. So, um... Let me just read the card real quick and make sure. Uh, yeah, I think I think this is how this is going to work. Unless I get an auto fail, I will obviously uh, miss this. But um, I can attack even at these desperate odds. Yeah. Um, we'll use a resource, put it, put the horror on Duke and gain a resource from Forbidden Knowledge. And we'll use that for Fire Axe. Um, actually, I don't think we need it. Um, that's... Let's not do that. So we'll we'll rewind this. So we didn't get a resource. We didn't put a horror on Duke. We're just going to attack straight up. It's going to be a uh, four versus an eight. And the chaos bag. There's nothing in that bag that's going to help us hit. Oh, <laughs> not even this elder sign. Unless you were Father Mateo. So if Duke gets to ready though. Not that that's going to help us right now. It's our last action in the round. But. This is why we did this, Stroke of Luck. Uh, it's one of the cards we bought for this scenario with experience points. Uh, basically, after you reveal Chaos Tokens, you can exile this and automatically succeed the test. So um, that's exactly what we're going to do. And we do three damage to this guy. 
we're going to gain a resource from our forbidden knowledge and that ends our turn and we take a horror of course which goes on duke um i think i played that wrong i was supposed to commit it obviously uh that's what i was intending to do from the very beginning so um sorry that i didn't play that in the right order i was supposed to commit that card to the test um first because if i draw an auto fail i can't use it so now umar doth hits us really hard i don't think i need duke so we'll, maybe we'll let him take the brunt of the rest of this um yeah we do need Lita, though. So, we'll take the damage. Duke's going to take the horror. Lita took a large portion of it as well. Uh, so, we'll go ahead and get rid of Duke over here. And we are barely alive. This is the final round here. If we can land three hits, I think we can kill him. That's going to be easier said than done with a combat of eight. So we'll gain a resource this time. We'll, we're not going to have um, do the dark horse thing where we don't gain a resource. We will gain one this round. We need it. I have a card that will prevent four damage or horror. So I might use that this round. We'll see. But just in case, I'll keep that resource just in case. We draw our encounter card and it's Umardoth's Wrath. Test five willpower for each point you fail by. Discard a card or take one damage on horror. Holy moly. This could kill us right here. This might be our end. <laughs> our willpower is four and we don't have Dark Horse. And no more Yauto giving us that bonus. Um, oh my god. I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> Anything but this. Um... Four, uh, eight versus five. Three over, I think, is going to help. Use three of my cards, though. Minus one. Look at that. We passed. Whew. We live to breathe at least through the end of this round. That was rough. It took three of my cards, including the one that I was saving up to absorb damage, but we needed it. All right. Uh, we will play fight or flight. It gives us a plus X to combat and evade. X being the number of horror on me, which is four. So that's a plus four till the end of the round. We'll use uh, the other resource to use Fire Axe. Now that we don't have to save it for that um, other card, we'll t or whatever it's called, Survival Instinct. Um, and because of the uh, Rita and Dark Horse and the Fire Axe and the two, that puts us at a 10 versus... Um, Eight. Not the greatest odds, but two over is okay. <laughs> so, oh, zero. Nice. Look at that. That's um, three damage to Umar Doth. Dude, we are actually doing pretty well against this guy. <laughs> so, it's got eight damage on him out of 13. That's amazing. Oh, this will to survive. Okay, let's do it again. Uh, we'll use Overpower. We're going to commit this card, giving us uh, two combat icons, putting us at another 10 versus uh, 8. Oh my god, come on, come on. Something good, something good. We get minus 1. <laughs> we hit him again. What? Okay. That's 3 more damage. We almost have this guy. <laughs> We just need two more. Two more. Two more damage. Um, okay. Here's what I'm thinking. Using Dark Horse and Lita gives me a plus. So that's um, a base of four plus this. That's an eight. It'll be an even check of an eight versus an eight. I could, though, sacrifice Lita. Not to Umardoth. Not that ending. But using this forbidden knowledge get rid of Lita so I can gain a resource Rita dies or Lita sorry I keep calling her Rita Lita dies I 
gain a resource and I can use it on fire axe, which will give me a plus two. So instead it'd be a nine versus an eight. Not the greatest of checks, but this is like the most desperate hack of a fire axe to the face. And we get a skull. Skull is minus X, the number of en monster enemies, and play one monster. He's not a monster. We hit him! We hit him! Oh my god, just one monster! What? Okay! <laughs> I can't believe it! We actually hit them! Two damage from the fire axe. Uh, so two damage goes right here. That's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's 13. Yeah! What? Oh my god, Will to Survive is a beast of a card. Um, this card is a champion right here. <laughs> and the fire, I mean everything. Everything just worked together perfectly. I can't believe how this went down. We killed the Devourer below. We get R2. That is incredible. I'm ecstatic. Uh, I've beaten this scenario, you know, maybe half the time that I've played it. As far as killing this guy, I've only done it maybe... I don't know, twice, <laughs> twice before, definitely never solo, and this is crazy, I did not expect Pete to actually kill him, it was a desperate swing of the axe, a 9 versus 8, and it was a dead on, minus 1, so 8 to 8, success, we have killed Umardath, <laughs> Pete is a beast, wow, Super happy, super ecstatic. I can't believe how this went down. What an awesome game. What an awesome, awesome game. Wow. This was incredible. What an ending to this uh, to this campaign. Very cool. Well, sorry to be overly ecstatic. I just, I don't normally play Survivors, and the play style is something that I'm not used to. And this thing... Uh, had me on the edge of my seat the entire time from the very first scenario to this final scenario I can see why people like uh, Survivors because they are very 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 much uh, Up and down and uh, you you know you fight against the odds and you succeed sometimes and it's just Really rewarding when you do very cool. I'm very happy to have um, Brought this scenario to you. I'm very happy that this went down this way during this recording and if you have any comments or anything uh, regarding this playthrough, if you notice any mistakes, please feel free to, to let me know. Uh, I usually catch most of them on um, post-production uh, because I do quite a bit of post-production work after I record. Uh, usually it's between 10 and 30 hours of work for each scenario uh, on a playthrough uh, between, um, you know, editing and all this stuff so let me know usually i'll catch them if i don't please let me know so i can make a note of it in the comments through force of arms and strength of will pete is somehow able to harm umardoth enough to send it really back to the dimension from which it emerged Warmth and light return to the voids as the void-like mass is sucked in upon itself, vanishing in an instant. Pete isn't sure if a being such as this can be killed, but for the time being it seems to have retreated. As the master vanishes, the ghouls nearby climb into the open pit below, fleeing with terrible cries and shrieks. Pete has stopped an evil plot, the fight has taken its toll on his body and mind. Thus, he can't help but feel insignificant in the face of the world's mysteries. What other terrors exist in the deep, dark corners of reality? <laughs> oh, and Pete thought he won. Until next time.